Chapter 13, Perfidy Unlimited. Together the three mice traveled down, down, down. The thread around Despero's neck was tight. He felt as if it was choking him. He tugged at it with one paw. Don't touch the thread, barked the second hood. Yeah, echoed the first hood. Don't touch the thread. They moved quickly, and whenever Despero slowed, one of the two hoods poked him in the shoulder and told him to keep moving. They went through holes in the wall and down golden stairs. They went past rooms with doors that were closed and doors that were flung wide. The three mice traveled across marble floors and under heavy velvet drapes. They moved through warm patches of sunlight and dark pools of shade. This, thought Despero, was the world he was leaving behind, the world that he knew and loved. And somewhere in it, the Princess P was laughing and smiling and clapping her hands to music, unaware of Despero's fate, that he would not be able to let the princess know what had become of him seemed suddenly unbearable to the mouse. Would it be possible for me to have a last word with the princess? Despero asked. A word, said the second hood. You want a word with a human? I want to tell her what has happened to me. Jeez, said the first hood. He stopped and stamped a paw on the floor in frustration. Cripes, you can't learn, can you? The voice was terribly familiar to Despero. Furlough? he said. What? said the first hood irritably. Despero shuddered. His own brother was delivering him to the dungeon. His heart stopped beating and shrunk to a small, cold, disbelieving pebble. But then, just as quickly, it leapt alive again, beating with hope. Furlow, Despero said, and he took one of his brother's paws in his own. Please let me go. Please. I'm your brother. Furlow rolled his eyes. He took his paw out of Despero's. No, he said. No way. Please, said Despero. No, said Furlow. Rules are rules. Reader, do you recall the word perfidy? As our story progresses, perfidy becomes an ever more appropriate word, doesn't it? Perfidy was certainly a word that was in Despero's mind as the mice finally approached the narrow, steep stairs that led to the black hole of the dungeon. They stood, the three mice, two with hoods and one without, and contemplated the abyss before them. And then Furlough stood up on his hind legs and placed his right paw over his heart. For the good of the castle mice, he announced to the darkness, we deliver this to the dungeon, a mouse in need of punishment. He is, according to the laws we have established, wearing the red thread of death. The red thread of death? repeated Despero in a small voice. Wearing the red th thread of death was terrible. A terrible phrase but the mouse didn't have long to consider its implication because he was suddenly pushed from behind by the hooded mice. The push was a strong one, and it sent Despero flying down the stairs into the dungeon. As he tumbled whisker over tail through the darkness, there were only two words in his mind. One was perfidy, and the other word that he clung to was P. Perfidy, P. Perfidy, P. These were the words that pinwheeled through Despero's mind as his body descended into the darkness. Chapter 14, Darkness. Despero lay on his back at the bottom of the steps and touched the bones in his body one by one. They were all there, and amazingly they were unbroken. He got to his feet and became aware of a terrible, foul, extremely insulting smell. The dungeon reader stank. It stank of despair and suffering and hopelessness, which is to say that the dungeon smelled of rats. And it was so dark. Despero had never before encountered darkness so awful, so all-encompassing. The darkness had a physical presence as if it were a being, all its own. The mouse held one small paw up in front of his whiskers. He could not see it, and he had the truly alarming thought that perhaps he, Despero Tilling, did not even exist. Oh my! he said out loud. His voice echoed in the smelly darkness. Perfidy, said Despero, just to hear his voice again, just to assure himself that he did exist. P, said Despero, and the name of his beloved was immediately swallowed up by the darkness. He shivered, he shook, he sneezed, his teeth clattered, chattered. He longed for his handkerchief. He grabbed hold of his tail. 
took him a long frightening moment to even locate his tail. So absolute was the darkness. To have something, anything to hold on to. He considered fainting. He deemed it the only reasonable response to the situation in which he had found himself. But then he remembered the words of the Threadmaster. Honor, courtesy, devotion, and bravery. I will be brave, thought Despero. I will try to be brave like a knight in shining armor. I will be brave for the Princess P. How best for him to be brave. He cleared his throat. He let go of his tail. He stood up straighter. Once upon a time, he said out loud to the darkness. He said these words because they were the best, the most powerful words that he knew, and just saying them, say, the saying of them comforted him. Once upon a time, he said again, feeling a tiny bit braver. There was a knight, and he wore always an armor of shining silver. Once upon a time, boomed a voice from the darkness. A knight in shining armor? What does a mouse know of such things? That voice, the loudest voice that Despero had ever heard, could only, he assumed, belong to the world's largest rat. Despero's small, overworked heart stopped beating, and for the second time that day, the mouse fainted.